Welcome to lesson 24 of my Erlang tutorial. In this lesson I will be talking about dynamic code loading. So the concept of dynamic uh, code loading can be uh, explained uh, uh, when you understand that uh, telecommunication systems cannot be stopped for the maintenance uh, or for the upgrade um, there must be some other mechanism uh, which which allows system to run and to replace the code during this, the, the runtime. Uh, so for this reason Erlang is implementing something called dynamic code loading and uh, Erlang is always trying to uh, invoke a latest version of function from the latest version of the module. So uh, if the uh, if the new version arrives uh, to the system, it will be invoked. Um, so I will demonstrate this um, on example. Let me show it. We have we we'll have simple count uh, module. which will export uh, one function, count, and this count function will be just increasing the number of input and it will return it. Now I will implement another module called counter which will be using the count module for uh, starting the process, which will be counting using the count function. Of course, this is counter. It will export three functions, start with one argument, loop with two arguments, and sleep with zero arguments. Uh, how will it work? So, <clears throat> when client invokes start, we want to spawn new process. Here I will pass the fun. And here, version will arrive to demonstrate how the version of the code changes. Um, and we have the version and one as an initial value for the counter. And then end. Then I want to also have the sleep. So sleep uh, will be just sleeping for some time. So after, let's say, 5000 milliseconds, we just want to return true. So this, this is the implementation of sleep. <clears throat> and then the loop will get two arguments, current version of the running code and the count. And first we want to sleep for five seconds. Then we want to get the value calculated with our count from the count module. We want to demonstrate that uh, Erlang will always invoke the latest version of this function from latest version of this module. So here I will just get some output. Version 1. Here I will provide the, uh, the version tag and also the value of the count. Version and file. And the last thing, I of course want to run this process in loop. So here I'm passing 
the version which is currently running and the value after the calculation in the counter function. It's of course not a counter but count. <clears throat> so this is my implementation. This will spawn new pro new process which will be counting using the count function from the count module here in the loop and uh, the counting is executed so first we sleep for five seconds then we want to calculate the, uh, the value based on the existing count we get the new value then we display it we, together with version number of the code and then we want to execute another loop uh, yeah, so this is it. Let's now try it out. I will run our lang and I will compile both count and counter modules. What now I will be doing? Uh, I will create process for the counter process using the start function and then I will be modifying the code uh, here in the editor of both count and counter modules to show you what will be the behavior uh, of Erlang, how it will be swapping the versions of modules um, and how uh, it will behave. Maybe <clears throat> to, to explain it, uh, whenever I will be changing count function in the count module, existing process will also affect this and it will show the change. If I will change the counter uh, to, to, see the, the, uh, to, to see the change, I will have to start the new process using the start because existing process will be running with this not change uh, version. And uh, I also want to demonstrate how many versions Erlang will be keeping uh, because Erlang always keeps the latest version of the code in virtual machine and the previous one. So I also want to demonstrate what will happen when I will have uh, three versions. So latest, previous one and the one before previous one. So let's start this demonstration based on this counter and count module. First I will start with creating one counter and here I will pass v1 version. After five seconds I will get the output and every five seconds I will get the result of the counting. So you see I started with one and then one to plus one is two then plus one three four and the counting will be going um, let's now change count module to show you how that, that this process will be affected. For this I will close this one and I will open count. Maybe I will now change this function and instead of plus one I will do minus one. I will save this and here in this Erlang shell I will compile count module and let's see what will happen okay you can already see that it was 11 and now it goes down there is countdown uh, so you see that I have changed the code here I have recompiled and the change of the module is uh, already reflected here because Erlang is trying to call latest version of count function um, so uh, we see that dynamic code loading works. Now let's change a counter module and let's change this version to version 2. I will compile counter and here you see that it still runs the version 1 of this module. Uh, 
so I will so so this uh, counter module was not replaced. Um, I will now create new counter version two to see if it will load also the latest version. Let's wait for five seconds, and here you see I have two versions still running <coughs> previous version version one uh, as well as new version two um, now i will change maybe once more count to maybe times two and recompile count to show that now you can see it's no longer minus one but a current value times two the change was reflected in both modules both versions and now i, I also want to change counter to version 3 to demonstrate what will happen if I will try to maintain three versions of a counter module in virtual machine. So currently you see I'm running two versions and after I, I will uh, compile counter module, something will happen. And what will happen? Um, pro all processes which are running version 1 of this module since I'm introducing new version, the latest version will be version 3. Uh, all, I cannot maintain two prior versions, I can only maintain one prior version. Therefore, processes which are running uh, a version 1 will be... Uh, uh, will die. Okay, let's com uh, recompile counter module. And here you see that only uh, process which is running version 2 is running and I can start v3 version 3 and I, I, I no longer see this version 1 because the version 1 is no longer there so the process died and if I will start v3 only v2 and v3 will be running so this is how it works in Erlang. It will be also heavily used in OTP. Um, and uh, because OTP also must run without maintenance windows. And to read more about these versions and replacements, I would encourage you to read the documentation. Or maybe, yeah, I will. documentation of purge module so this is where you can find more information about this so i hope it was useful thanks for listening and have fun programming carolang